Week 23 Games Played Schedule 5 Games GSW 4 Games Boss, Cha, Li, Dal, Den, Det, Hu, Eint, Mia, Mil, NYK, Sak, San, Tor, UTA, Was 3 Games, ATL, Kai, Lak, Lal, Mem, Min. NOP, OKC, Phi, PHX, 4-2 games, BRK, ORL as usual, the first number listed is the player's number of this games this week, and the percentage is his ownership in Yahoo leagues. Kevin Durant will hopefully return on Monday, just in time for a 5-game slate, while the Nets and Magic play just two times in Week 23. Follow me on Twitter right here. Point guards for Jalen Brunson Mavericks 45% kid has been rolling and is boosted by Luka Doncic's bum knees. If 21.2 points, 4.2 rebounds, 5.6 assists and 2.03 pointers over his last 5 games or his upcoming 4 game week aren't enough to convince you, I don't know what to tell you. 3 Tyus Jones Wolves 22% Jones has been cooking with gas over his last 3 games and had 12 points, 9 assists and a steal on Thursday. Jeff Teague and Derek Rose are constantly banged up, shutdowns appear to be on the horizon, and Jones could roll the rest of the way. For Emmanuel Mutier Nick 16% Mutier's value is tied closely to the health of Dennis Smith Jr., but then again, it's the Knicks, so there's no rhyme or reason to how anything is done. Mutier had 21 points, 4 boards, 4 assists, 2 steals and 4 3-pointers on Tuesday, and backed it up with 14 points, 4 boards, 2 assists and 2 3-pointers on Friday. His Sunday game is in progress, but it's off to a nice start. The 4 games this week make him worth any of the risks that come along with him. 3 Alex Caruso Lakers 2% Caruso's posted back-to-back 16-point -back games, with 5 and 2 assists, and some 3-pointers. His Sunday game is in progress as I type this, but I assume he'll be decent in that one as well. I'd like him a lot more if the Lakers played 4 times this week. He's been playing well with Rajan Rondo putting up nice numbers, but a Rondo shutdown is still a lingering possibility, and if it happens, Caruso would get a massive boost. Shooting guards 3 Delon Wright Grizzlies 15% Wright disappeared on Saturday with 5 points in 24 minutes, but had scored in double figures in his previous 5 games. He's averaging 12.2 points, 3.6 rebounds, 3.8 assists, 1.2 steals, 0.6 blocks and 0.4 three-pointers in 27 minutes over his last five games. He's fantasy-friendly and should continue to see solid minutes for a bad Memphis team the rest of the way. 3 Shy Gilgis Alexander Clippers 31% Shy's hot again after being one of the most added and dropped fantasy players this season. He had 17 points, 7 boards, 7 assists, 3 steals, a block, a 3-pointer on Friday, and has played really well in 4 of his last 5 games, averaging 13.4 points, 3.2 rebounds, 3.8 assists, 1.4 steals, 0.6 blocks and 1.03 pointers over his last 5 games. I just wish the Clippers played 4 times. 4 Wayne Ellington 15%, Langston Galloway 7%, Luke Kennard 23% Pistons, Ellington's hit 14 three-pointers in his last four games and scored in double figures in three of his last four, Galloway scored 23 and 21 points in two of his last four games and has hit 17 three-pointers over his last five, but he's just as likely to disappear as go off, and Kennard is averaging is struggling, averaging 8.0 points, 3.4 rebounds, 3.0 assists and 1.2 three-pointers on 36% shooting over over his last five. Kennard's the most rounded player, Galloway's the most hit or miss and Ellington's the most reliable for three-pointers. For Monty Morris Nuggets 15% Unlike most of the rest of the world, I wasn't all that psyched about Morris when it was announced that Isaiah Thomas was out of the rotation. Denver's still deep and Morris is still going to have to fight for what he gets. And while I thought I might have made a mistake after him scored 17 and 16 points in back-to-back -back games, he was really quiet in his games on Thursday and Saturday. But the Nuggets have a four-game week, Thomas really is out of the rotation, and Morris has a chance to shine down the stretch.
He hit just 4 of 11 shots in those last two games, which was a sharp contrast to how he shot it in the previous two good games. For Brandon Knight Cavaliers 2% Knight was rolling until his 5-point game on Sunday, when he hit just 2 of 6 shots. But still, he's averaging 11 points, 2.2 rebounds, 2.6 assists, 1.4 steals and 1.6 3-pointers on 48% shooting over his last 5 games. As long as he's getting his 25 minutes a night for the Cavs, he should be a decent, low-end fantasy option in deeper leagues. And the 4 games helps. Small forwards for Damian Dotson Knicks 32% Dotson's off to a great start in Sunday's game, in progress, and has been killing it, scoring 21, 18 and 26 points in his previous three games. He's also stealing, rebounding, assisting and hitting three-pointers, and the Knicks play four times this week. He's the hottest pickup out there right now, and you should stop reading this and go pick him up right now. For Wesley Matthews Pacers 34% Matthews hasn't been great, but he hasn't been bad, either. He's at 10.4 points, 4.2 rebounds, 2.2 assists, 1.0 steals and 1.8 three-pointers, shooting just 39% over his last five. Maybe the four-game week staring him in the face will get his shot back on track. 3 Kyle Herter Hawks 27% Herter exploded for 27 points, 4 boards, 3 assists and 4 three-pointers last Sunday and then had 2 more decent games last week. He'll look to keep it going against the Magic this Sunday night, and if he does, it's time to go get him, again. He's another guy who's been all over the place this season, but it feels like he's heating up and should finish up strong. 3 Landry Shamit Clippers 12% Shamit's quietly scored between 9 and 12 points in each of his last 5 games, averaging 10.8 points, 2.2 rebounds, 3.0 assists, 0.4 steals and 2.83 pointers on 40% shooting over that stretch. Unfortunately, he's only got 3 games this week. Power forwards for Nikola Mirotic Bucks 85% and Bobby Portis Wizards 68% I'm only including these guys here in case one of them is somehow available in your league. Mirotic should really get a boost with new of Malcolm Brogdon's regular season-ending injury, and Portis is too good to be on waivers. Ford White Powell Mavericks 59% Powell just keeps getting it done and is averaging 14.8 points, 6.4 rebounds, 1.6 assists, 0.6 steals, 0.8 blocks and 0.63 pointers on 56% shooting over his last five games. And with four games this week, he's a must-own player. For J. Crowder Jazz 36% Crowder's been surprisingly consistent lately, scoring between 11 and 18 points in each of his last five games, and averaging 13 points, 5.8 rebounds, 1.8 assists, 0.6 steals and 2.2 three-pointers on 40% shooting over his last five. And I kind of like him with the four-game week this period. 2 Rodion's Kurix Nets 20% Kurix has kind of accidentally become one of my guys, coming through for me in DFS and playing pretty well since finally being given the starting PF job for the Nets. He's only scored 8 in each of his last two games, has been in foul trouble in 4 straight, and played just 17 minutes on Saturday. He's still averaging 11 points, 4.6 rebounds, 1.2 steals, 1.0 blocks and 1.8 three-pointers on 60% shooting over his last five. The steals, blocks and threes are fantasy gold, but the Nets only play twice this week. And that's going to make it tough to use studs like D'Angelo Russell, let alone a guy like Kurix. For Noah Vonley Nick, 16% Vonley was going to be listed here, as he was really coming on. But he got hurt, ankle, on Friday and won't play on Sunday. If he recovers and will play next week, the Knicks go four times, making him worth a look. But I can't really tell you to pick him up if he might not play next week. Mario Hazona is starting for him on Sunday, while Luke Cornett could get a boost in his absence, as well. See what the box score looks like on Sunday and act accordingly. 
It's too bad Vinley got hurt, as he had played between 28 and 33 minutes in three straight games before going down. Centers for Jakob Pertl Spurs 23% Pertl's going to be a hot pickup after his recent play, but I still have trust issues, simply because of who he is and whom he plays for. But he had 8 points, 6 boards and 5 blocks on Saturday, 12 points, 9 boards, 2 steals and 5 blocks on Friday. That's only a 2-game sample, but you just can't argue with 10 blocks in 2 games. I have no idea if he'll keep it going, but with 4 games staring him in the face, I'd gamble to find out. For Bam Adebayo Heat 44% Adebayo's been starting and had a double-double Friday with 5 assists, a block and a steal. He's scored in double digits in 5 straight games and is averaging a respectable 12 points, 8.0 rebounds, 3.1 assists, 0.7 steals and 0.9 blocks in March. The Heat play on Sunday and I expect him to keep it going, and have no problems throwing him out there for 4 games next week. For Thomas Bryant Wizards 22% Bryant is scary to put into a lineup, as he'll often not be doing anything through three quarters. But he also usually comes through. He's averaging 9.4 points, 5.0 boards, 1.2 assists, 0.4 steals and 1.2 blocks over his last five games, shooting 53%. And with four games, he's still worth a look if you can't get Pirtle or Adebayo. 3. Joachim Noah Grizzlies 22% OA is somehow still relevant and averaging 10.6 points, 8.0 boards, 3.8 assists, 0.6 steals and 0.8 blocks over his last five games. He only plays three times this week, unfortunately. 3. He beats a Zubik Clippers 24% Zubik checks in at 10.8 points, 8.0 rebounds, 1.6 assists, 0.2 steals and 0.4 blocks over his last 5 games, hitting 55% of his shots. I wish he blocked more shots or had 4 games this week.